Good evening, Defenders, and welcome to another episode of the uh, Defender Fitness Alliance show. Uh, I want to thank you guys again for being part of the Alliance. Uh, guys, make sure you guys uh, spread the word. Uh, if you guys know of any veterans, any uh, anybody in the law enforcement or first responders community, have them uh, join the Defender Fitness Alliance. All right. Uh, so with that being said, I want to welcome our very special guest this evening. He is a Marine Corps veteran and he is also the founder and CEO of Vet Training and Coaching. Um, he also is a performance, uh, personal performance and growth uh, coach at Landmark San Diego. Uh, he studied wealth and creation and success mindset, success resources. He's doing a lot of things, guys. Uh, <laughs> so this guy's a, a busy, busy Marine outside of the uniform. I want to welcome our uh, very, very special guest this evening. Uh, Chris Hoffman. Chris, uh, first off, I want to thank you for uh, for joining me this evening, uh, for joining me this weekend. And uh, let's start off uh, with, with telling us a little bit about your service and uh, what you're up to now. Yeah, for sure, brother. Hey, first and foremost, man, thank you to have me on the show, man. Aren't you like a soon to be father or a father right now? Soon to be, yeah. <laughs> soon to be father, man. So you're like should be doing Pre preparation father duties right now. So first and foremost, man, thanks for uh, thanks for having me in on Father's Day, man. I know that you got a lot going on over there in your life, and just thanks thanks for having me inside your tribe. Um, so, guys, uh, for Marine, I joined back in 2008, served for four years. So I was a four year and outer, and in those four years, I mean, really, why I joined is I joined because I never had a father. See, Father's Day has always been like a really um, lonely celebration for me. And I usually go up in the mountains and hike for the full day, but I came back early for reading to be here live with you guys. But um, I was raised without a father. Um, I was literally raised by my mom, multiple father figures throughout my whole life. And um, why I joined the United States Marine Corps, plain and simple, is because I wanted to learn what it took to be a man. You see, I saw military, I saw the military guy in the uniform. I, I you know, how the Marine Corps sold me was climbing up on that mountain and then up at the top he's he has his sword and he's all dressed in his dress blues and at that time you know i was like that's what a man looks like that's who i want to become and i was like i'm going all in inside the marine corps so i joined in 2008 when i was 19 years old um was motor t we have a slogan if you if if you uh can't truck it f it <laughs> pretty much um you know Got to live in Japan for two years in Okinawa, Japan. Didn't take up in hardly any culture while I was there, but I definitely did enjoy my life there. That was fun. Um, met some of the best men and women over there. I possibly met, met one of my best friends over there, actually, still to this day. Um, and then I actually did deployment to Afghanistan in my third year into um, Delaram 2. It's a small fob south of Camp Bloodlineck oh, yeah. in Afghanistan. And I got to I got to get some out there. I was a 240 gun Bravo gunner out there. And um, then my third year, I actually got out, out here in uh, Miramar, California, where I kind of just fell in love with whatever San Diego is, man. And i uh, been out here grinding ever since, man. So, <laughs> so that's kind of my story of why I joined and kind of a short version of my service. Well, uh, that's an awesome story, man. I never knew about the, the that background on you. And thanks for joining me on this, uh, like I said, the special day for uh, for the fathers out there. Uh, for all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day, guys. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, uh, Chris, any advice for those um, who may be wanting to serve? And what would your message be to those that are still serving now? Still serving now. Um, my biggest biggest thing that I've learned through interviewing some of the top performing ambitious vets that are in the uniform and out of the uniform right now on my podcast is that you guys got to have a plan. Um, you know, um, I was actually on Veteran on the Move with Joe Crane. Um, I think it was about two years ago when I was just getting vet training coaching off the ground is uh, he always preaches how start planning out a year out, right? One of the biggest things that I teach in my uh, ebook, 10 steps to break success and creating a personal brand, which is a personal brand is really becoming known for something out of the uniform is you, it, there's a small formula to follow assess, strategize, target, and engage, right? Assessing and assess yourself inside and out, find out, 
you know, who you are, what your core values are, right? I have a vow assessment that I put guys through. I also have them assess themselves externally. Interview your friends that are in the uniform, your family members, stuff like that. Ask them, what am I good at? Stuff like that. Assess where you're at because once you assess where you're at, you have a baseline to grow off of. Once you know where you're at, strategize, right? Once you strategize, you can actually start understanding what do you want to be known for and the skill sets that you have to develop to monetize out the uniform targets, just targeting where you want to go. Um, literally, what do you want to do, where you want to go, who are the people you need to network with, and then slightly just start engaging about a year out. And when you guys do that, I promise you, it's still going to be hard, but it's gonna, you're going to have a good foundation um, underneath you as you start growing and planting more deeper seeds for growth out of the uniform. Awesome, brother. Great advice. And uh, just talking about uh, your transitioning, um, how was your experience with that whole transitioning from, you know, being in the Marine Corps and then getting out and becoming a civilian? Uh, what's, yeah. I guess, what's one big advice that you would give to those that are, you know, maybe in that uh, phase? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Um, for me, I was kind of I was kind of the guy that waited till last minute. I was in the Marine Corps, so they wanted me to like be hard charging till the day I got out. Um, I was kind of quote unquote a shit bag for the last three months because I was going to a lot of the unemployment workshops because I was I was seeing for myself um, that TAPS and TAMS and stuff like that, all those programs were not really um, providing me with the knowledge nor the resources that I needed to utilize. So what I did is I actually went to the unemployment and took workshops. And um, for me, what I did is I walked right out of the uniform one day, March 24th of 2012, right into 24 hour fitness the day afterwards and became a sales rep for them. And um, I literally just went right back into the civilian world. But what was hard for me is I learned that the civilian world, they use a lot of emotional language, right? And us as military, we use a lot of directive, mission oriented stuff like that language. So right. I was literally like... <laughs> <laughs> I was a fish in a, I was, I was a fish in water and didn't know I was a fish in water. Right. So I literally had to understand things that I didn't know that were in my blind spot. And I had to learn how to actually start acclimating to the civilian world again, start using feeling words, start figuring out how do I connect? How do I start connecting to my heart again, man? You know what I mean? Cause I was so numb. I was like, bah, 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 bah. I was overly professional, man. And people could not connect with me. And, um, you know, and for long story short, I, I worked for 24 hour fitness for 12 months and I got fired for some dumb shit. Um, and then, um, I'm sorry if I can't cuss on this, man. I oh, you're good, brother. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah. And then it got really tough, man. In 2013, I tried to take my life twice and I was, I always joke around now since I, it's past that, that I was a Marine. We, you know, we're broken crayon Marines, so we never do anything right. But I tried to take my life twice at the end of the year 2013 when I was living in probably the worst part worst part of my whole life when I was living in the ghetto part of San Diego. For these guys who are not in San Diego, there is a ghetto part of San Diego. Yes, in America's final, yes. finest city. Um, and yeah, I literally, um, darkest part of my life, I tried to take my life twice and then it didn't work. So I was just like, okay. Um, what is this life all about? And that's when I started realizing that I'm at a level one in my life. I'm at a level one, just like whenever I started in Marine Corps, I was a private. I got to start building myself up. I got to lower my pride. I got to lower my entitlement, right? At that time, I was figuring out how do I consistently increase my disability and use the voc rehab and all this kind of stuff. And no wonder why my life started kind of getting like unfulfilled, less impactful. And I felt like I was like this Clark Kent when I f used to feel like a Superman in the Marine Corps, right? So long story short, man, as I started figuring out who I wanted to be, I started diving into personal development. I joined a network marketing companies and um, I, start, I, was, I, I dove right into personal development. It had me start really understanding who I was, what had me react the way I reacted every single day and started helping me create new thought patterns that empowered me versus disempowered me. And long story short, five different careers over the past five and a half years of being out of the uniform, two failed businesses. And um, now I'm sitting here with you today, man, and, um, and sharing the story, right? 
awesome, brother, man. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of uh, information you take in. Um, <laughs> so, when you uh, let's just go back to when you um, when you first got out. You said you joined. Uh, you got a job at Twenty Four Hour Fitness. How did you uh, How did you get that job, and um, how did that come about? To you know what you're doing now as a transition and personal training coach. Yeah, absolutely. So how did I get that job? Well, it was cool because one cool thing about us veterans, you know, especially ambitious vets, they're resourceful and self-aware, okay, is regardless of 20, 30 people going in and, and, and interviewing for a job, you know you're the one that stands out. Now, at that time, when I was interviewing while I was still in the Marine Corps, I was walking into those interviews and I was stuttering. I did not know how to commu- communicate myself at all to that hiring manager for 24 hour fitness, the club manager at the time. And, um, I was super nervous. I had, I had, I had tons of social anxiety and I did not know how to literally form a message of who I could be for the company. All I could say is, Hey, I'm mission oriented. And if you hire me, I'll get my shit done. That's it. So long story short, what got me that job, the last spot that they had for this new launch of this new gym out here in San Diego was I attended this workshop at the unemployment office that said the small things matter the most, right? Like if you read the how to win friends and influence people, the go giver, all these are basic principles, basic wisdom in life that we all know, but we forget about it or someone's burnt us in our life. And we stop thinking about these basic day-to-day principles and habits and routines and rituals that if we just did them, our life would work, right? And there was this thing that he taught us. He said, a handwritten thank you letter, regardless of you getting hired right after the interview, go and and give them a handwritten thank you letter and just say, hey, thank you for your consideration. And I have another option on the table on the side, but I just wanted to let you know that you have until tomorrow at noon to go ahead and choose me, but here's my handwritten note to say thank you. So one, you got leverage. Two, I'm sitting there having a handwritten note and it shows effort in separating me from the rest of my competition. Long story short, I walked in, went to a 99 cent store because that's all I could afford for a car at that time out here in San Diego. And I walked in, gave the club manager that car and thanked her and let her know that I had another option at Choose Fitness out here in San Diego the next day at noon, which I kind of did, kind of didn't. And um, she wanted to call me an hour later, said that no one's ever done that before. And she wanted me to come aboard. She liked the initiative. So that's how I took that job. And then what was the second part of your question? Well, um, you know, becoming a personal trainer and then you talked about like the many different jobs and businesses that you've had. How did you end up to what you're doing uh, now in vet training and coaching? Ooh, buddy. That's a that's a deep question. We could talk for hours upon <laughs> that. Come on now. Um, no, brother. I mean, really, what got me down to that is I, I realized that I didn't, you know, I, I got to a point where I started my personal training business in like 2000, and I think it was, yeah, 2014, 15. I was making like six figures with that. I was like literally hustling in the trenches. I was going to like apartment complexes, condo complexes here in San Diego and just pitching them. Hey, I can literally have your your people, your tenants living here, help the retention go up and help them roll out of bed and have their trainer rating for them. So who did I start training? I started little black dresses, post-pregnancy and stuff like that. Women out here in San Diego, first thing in the morning, made six figures, but that company was branded around me, not a bigger vision. It had no core values. It was never scalable. So I got burnt out. But the answer to your question is, is how I started getting into performance coaching, life coaching and, and personal branding coaching for vets is I realized I st- I, that, that the long lasting fulfillment and transformation in people's lives isn't our external figure. It actually starts in here and here. Right. And, you know, I, I realized that like I was a little bit more deeper guy than what I was, you know, telling everyone I was. And uh, at that time, I was a huge me head, didn't read any books. The only book I read at that point was like Captain Underpants, which I'm not that happy about, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I just start, what I did is I went back to school. I used my GI Bill to study psychology. I just fell in love with psychology, man. I fell in love with human performance and what, what has us not be effective in our everyday life. 
And then on the side, while I was going to school, I was coaching programs for an international personal professional development company called Landmark and was coaching like CEOs, vice presidents and all this. Mind you, I'm a guy that's still at this age. I'm like, I'm 30 now. But back then I was like 20, 25, 26. And I was coaching these high level executives and being effective. I was like, wow, like if I could just repurpose this and market it to like, you know, a demographic that like. I, I, you know, I went to the seminar two years ago called Success Research, like you mentioned before, and they said to brand any company, you've got to market it to a niche that you've already mastered. And I was like, what have I mastered in my life? Well, I haven't mastered a hell of a lot yet. <laughs> so I was like, what have I mastered? And I was just like, well, I've mastered the transition. So I was just like, man, what if I could come in and really help these ambitious veterans that have this gritty feeling to them, this resourcefulness and these people that these guys and gals that love personal development and help teach them how to create a personal brand that monetizes out of the uniform. And all of a sudden, like I just I started working on the messaging for the past two years, doing a lot of market research. And I saw that there was a huge need out there for veterans that were desiring to learn how what it took to live an impactful life out of the uniform. And that's what led us to today, man. Awesome, brother. Man, uh, now lead, now you're leading uh, veterans, um, you know, trying to find their path uh, out of the uniform. Yep. Great message, man. Um, so, hey, quickly, I want to give a shout out to uh, Donald Dodson. And, yeah, uh, buddy. Brandon Harris saying, what's up, my dudes? What's up, man? Brandon Come on, is another, Brandon Harris. Brandon yeah, is another uh, Marine. I don't pray on eating Marina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Hey, we're proud. What's of up? You. What's up, Brandon? <laughs> um, so, uh, Chris, man. So, talking about your um, the vet training and coaching, um, what's been, I guess, what's been some of the worst moments so far in creating this uh, this this training and coaching business? Yeah. And how did you overcome yeah. all that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm well. The question is, you know, I'm always overcoming it, man. There's always challenges. Um, the biggest challenge is veterans don't want to pay for shit. Straight up. Yeah, cheap. We that. don't we don't want to pay for shit. So as soon as you say you're a for-profit company, veterans are just like, well, I could go over here and do a reboot workshop out here in San Diego for free. And I, you know, I could go and do these nonprofits. I'm like, yeah, you could do that, right? But then why do why is still 22 veterans a day committing suicide? Why is there still over 250,000 veterans out here in San Diego unemployed? Right. I bet a lot of them thought about the free resources as well. But if you do free things, you get free results. If you don't have any skin in the game, there's there's you don't have any commitment in the game. Plain and simple. So what the biggest challenge, man, before I kind of talk about how I surpassed that is um, messaging, getting clear on how to speak to veteran. Veteran is a unique avatar to speak to. It's not easy getting to a veteran's heart. Um, to make wanting to, you know, have a coach, right. Where we get out, we think we got it together. I know I did for at least the first year, two years until my life started like boom. And, um, not to say anybody's life is going to go like that. That's just how my life went. Um, but the messaging was tough branding and, um, really getting veterans to pay for stuff was my biggest challenges. And kind of how I've kind of went around it now is I've created a Facebook group called Veteran Empowerment Transition. And we use that. We use that group as market research, man. We use that to get clear on our messaging. We get we use that group to kind of test different things, bring in different influencers. Um, you know, I make money off interviewing people inside the group based on like back in affiliate marketing and stuff like that. And, um, you know, what I do is I tell any veteran that wants to become someone out of the uniform, be known for something, is that we are a results-driven company. I offer a guarant- 100% guarantee at the end of our signature program, we're to passion-driven, that if you're not satisfied, I give you 100% guaranteed money versus going to a nonprofit, that they're getting paid off the volume of veterans that go through their program versus the results that they're getting them, right? And we have tons of case studies of guys that have gone through our one-on-one coaching programs where they're diving into the trenches with me. They're diving right into the trenches with me where I walk them through the three phases of our program. So um, messaging, brother, um, veterans paying for shit and, um, and and just really, 
you know, creating a need in that market would be the three biggest challenges. Yeah, no, nah, man, I, uh, I agree with you 100% with all that. Um, yeah. Again, like uh, the whole veterans, I mean, let's, let's just put it out there. We don't like paying for shit. Like you said, yeah. uh, we, yeah. all, we, all, we all want the, we all want the free stuff. And then once we put a price to it, it's like, Oh, how dare you put a price to, you know, your yep. service or whatever. Um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta pay to play, right? Um, yep. You know, if, if you guys want uh, great uh, masterminds, great coaching, um, there's a price to pay for that. I mean, yep. you guys got to think that, you know, that person has to make a living as well. And, you know, they have families as well that they got to feed. So yep. uh, great point, man. No, absolutely. So, uh, also to add to that real quick, brother, for me, it drives me because I could go start a nonprofit, get funding and stuff like that and still, you know, give myself a salary. Right. But that doesn't put skin in the game for me. Right. If I can rely on funding, do I have any skin in the game to get you results? Probably right. not. So like me being a for profit business puts my skin in the game as well. So I'm literally in the trenches committed to getting you results as well or I don't get fed. That's the thing with nonprofit, you got to depend on somebody else to get that money. Yeah, yeah. So. exactly, man. Uh uh-uh. uh. And, that, and that's why you see so many like nonprofits. I mean, I mean, let's be real out there. So many nonprofits out there popping left and right. And then next thing you know, they're gone. So, yep. Um, Absolutely, brother. All right, Chris. So let's talk about the best, um, the good times, right? What's What's been the best moment so far uh, since creating this uh, this business that you have? Yeah, man, it's 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 finding leaders that want to do the same thing you're doing, man. Um, it's the fun part is when you start creating momentum and momentum, you know, is created through one following your natural skill sets and just saying yes to your intuition. But three, being really consistent, like just being super consistent with the small things every day. And as you do that, there's going to be people that, you know, you know, Gary V. I'm a Gary V. guy, even though sometimes when I watch him, he exhausts me with how hard he works. <laughs> he exhausts me, man. I'm a hard amazing, man. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Whenever I and whenever I'm feeling like a itch, you know, I'm always looking at Gary V. I'm like, okay, this guy's still grinding. Um, <laughs> but he says it's a law of one, man. There's, you know, if you're getting one view on your lives right now, if you're getting one like on your post, stuff like that, you don't know who's liking your stuff. You don't know who's viewing your stuff, right? And that could always be something powerful. I'll share a quick story right now. I mean, even with the Facebook lives that I do every Thursday night inside my tribe. Um, I just went extreme exclusive with those. So I don't share them in other tribes and stuff like that. So we're not hitting 800 to a thousand people a week. Oh, well, but it's cool because it's driving more quality traffic to our tribe. But here's a story real quick. Um, about a month ago, a guy that I didn't even know that just launched a book called the rise of the Vetrepreneur, um, Rico Danielson. Yeah, man. He found that Facebook Live, and I don't know if you know his background, but he's a severely successful uh, business guy down in uh, around Phoenix, Arizona parts, uh, serial entrepreneur, and he's planning on turning that book into something huge. I'm not going to announce it for him, but it's it's going to be mainstream soon. And like that would have never the opportunity of connecting with him and work, collaborating with him, what he's going to do with that book. Um, would have never came up if it wasn't for me being consistent with my lives and stuff like that. So what the funnest times is actually getting, you know, figuring it all out, man, you know, and like standing against something that you're not okay with in the world and then attracting like-minded people as you stay consistent. That's the funnest part of this whole thing, man. That's just so funny. You said that dude. Cause uh, I was just talking to Rico. Me and Rico really? have been actually talking for the past. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to work together soon as well. Perfect. Um, Rico's an awesome guy. He's sharp, man. He's a good dude. All right, Chris. So uh, for those uh, listeners, uh, viewers watching, the veterans, um, what's your biggest advice to those um, who may be wanting to start their own, I guess, personal performance coaching business? How how would that um, how okay. would that go about? Yeah, man. Oh, man. Um, That is a great question. So starting a performance and coaching business, I mean, really what it comes down to is you got to know how to listen behind what people are actually saying. Like you got to, if you are like me, I I see myself as an empath so I can pick up on people's energy and stuff like that. So, 
you know, to answer this question, I got to go back to a story back when I was in a network marketing company. There was a lot of this, what I call and teach is the feedback loop. It's a psychology theory where you got to listen to what people are constantly saying you're good at, right? Two, three people saying it's a conspiracy, four or five say it. It's probably something you should start focusing on. There's a lot of people saying you should be a coach because there was natural things that I was doing back then that was having people be like, wow, you really are good at helping people break mental barriers and helping them get unstuck in their life and and listening behind what they're actually saying so they can get more clear in what they're trying to interpret. A lot of people don't even know what the hell they're saying. <laughs> Believe it or not, they don't. And it's just like getting them clear on the thoughts that are going through their head and the invalid, the, the invalid, the invalidness of it, I guess. Don't try to use too big a words, Chris. I'm a Marine. Shit. <laughs> the invalid, the validness of it. And just like, if you can be good at helping, you know, be able to really listen to people, if you're an empath, you can really pick up on things with people and you can empower them and naturally inspire them into action. You know, then then it's just getting results. Like one of the biggest mistakes I made is I went out and I got certifications. I got a veteran um, veteran development certification through uh, Blue Real Strategies. I went and got a psychology degree, did like four years as a coach inside of Landmark to finally feel like I was incubated enough to go out and start doing this. But I could have done it a long time ago. But I always tell everyone that it's just like it's a marathon, not a race. And it always happens when it's supposed to happen. But I would just tell them, I mean, get get around other coaches, join a coaching mastermind, join coaching groups, meetup groups, stuff like that. Figure out what's working in that market, figure out what they're doing, figure out what they're not doing and go do that and then create a niche Figure out what you want to be known for and start creating online courses. Online courses right now are the biggest profit margin you could be creating right now. Um, and then I would also encourage them to do a Facebook group to kind of just work on their messaging and and pr- use that group as as their avatars, right? So I hope, that, I hope that answers your question, man. Yeah, awesome advice, uh, Chris. Um, yeah. What's I guess that leads to my next question. What's um what's one internet resource that they can go to or um, kind of, you know, get guidance on to maybe start a um, performance coaching business? Yeah. Um, well, you guys got to figure out who are the other performance coaches out there, right? Like they're, you know, think about it. Um, Blanchard, his last name, he wrote the habit, habit, high performance habits or something like that. He's a performance coach. Tony Robbins is a performance coach. Landmark is a great resource to start getting connected in, but they're more, tailored towards transformative work. But when you think of performance coaching, what it comes down to is what's stopping you and being effective in your life. What's stopping you to being more productive, effective, and fulfilled in your life right now? What's what's in your way, right? And it's just getting that out of the way. So figure out, figure out what are the tribes around you. If there is a performance coach around you, take them out for a cup of coffee, figure out their their model so you can collaborate if you can't collaborate figure out what they're not doing go out and get that done and you know like the first year of vet training coaching was me in coffee shops in zoom meetings i know this is be live but i'm usually on zoom used to zoom and like literally just interviewing veterans that were still in the uniform just getting out and multi-millionaire veterans just asking them what would they create if it was a modern day coaching program? Like I would, I would ask them, what was TAPS missing? What was all this missing? And there was a consistency across the board. And I just, there was three main pain points and I created a program around that, man. Right. People, people want to get rich quick and it's not, it's just not about that. Right. Yeah. It takes time, man. It does. It does. So, uh, uh, Chris, uh, before we, um, Tell us a little bit about this uh, ebook that you have, um, the ten yeah. steps to predicted success out of the uniform. Yeah, brother, it's um, it's an ebook that's been like in the in the works for like two years, man. It started as an, uh, believe it or not, it started as a ten like automatized like um, email drip campaign for my email list that was going to upsell them to like my coaching program. And then after that, I saw like the open rates of like the personal branding. I saw the open rates for being resourceful. Some of these key topic points of the book. I was like, man, if I elaborated on this, this could become something. So what I did is I spent the next year 
interviewing people, um, recruiting some other guys that are passionate about self-help and personal development for veterans and got their minds wrapped around it, man. And literally we created the 10 step to, to predict success out of the uniform and kind of what this whole thing is about. It's the, it's the 10 top life lessons that I've learned out of the five and a half years that I've been out of the business, uh, out of, out of the organization of Marine Corps failing in five careers and two businesses and what it takes to, you know, create a solid foundation, some basic principles in your life to actually start creating momentum, create that impactful life and really thrive out in the uniform. And uh, for those of you guys uh, watching out there, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you guys know later on as far as uh, where, where you can get, where you guys can uh, get a copy of this uh, ebook. All right. Uh, so, Chris, coming up to the last portion of our interview here. Uh, so this is the uh, part of the interview where I ask the five fitness facts of my guests. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, Chris. Uh, so first question, what's your favorite workout? Oh, man. Oh, man. Was my, is it, does it have to be a Nike an exercise or a workout regimen? Any workout or exercise. Oh, super set. I like supersets, man. I like supersets. I like like hitting two like two spots. Like I like to do chest and then follow right back with a back exercise. Man, I feel like I feel like Arnold for like five minutes until the pump. <laughs> the, pump the pump wears away. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh next question? What's your least favorite? Oh, legs probably doing squats because my yeah man i sit around a lot my hips are super tight so i spend yeah. like probably the first 30 minutes like loosening up my hips hips just to go deep enough for squats <laughs> guy do squats in between these interviews <laughs> <laughs> no. all right uh, next question so uh, if you had to choose one person you could train with who would it be and why oh um yeah um I don't know, man. I would say Steve Cook. I was following him for a little bit, but then I was like, ah, this is kind of one of those those uh, me head guys. And I was like, Jocko Wheeling, man. This is mindset. This is mindset. I don't give a shit if he rolls with me, breaks my arm, man. I'm just like, you know what? Just to be around his mindset, I'll take a broken arm over an MMA, you know, sparring session. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, Jocko. Jocko. Yeah. Definitely. If you guys don't know about Jocko, I mean, I don't know why you don't know about Jocko, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Check out his check out his Instagram too. Every morning, four thirty in the morning. He's getting yeah. it after. Yeah. Awesome. Big book. Extreme ownership. He's a best selling author of that book. Guy's a former Navy SEAL, just a very influential guy in the veteran space. Guys, you guys gotta follow that guy. Well, that was my next question. Recommend a book for our listeners to read. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, extreme ownership, but I also just read a good one. Um, and it's the go giver, man. Like I kind of just referenced that before. And it is like, I love the wisdom books. I love the books that aren't trying to te repurpose past, you know, principles into a new language for today's market. I like listening to the basic principles and that's what the go giver is. It's like, you know, like one of the core principles is, is focus more on other people's interests than your own. That's how you create influence. Focus more on the 100% win over there and the law of reciprocation will always come back, right? And we don't think about it like that, but it really is like that. And if someone doesn't give you the law of reciprocation, then you know that that's probably not someone to have in your network. Plain and simple. Excellent point, man. Yep. Uh, next question. Tell us your favorite quote and why. Ooh, man, how I always finish any of my lives it's a quote by Rumi. It's called hold the vision and trust the process. And the reason why that thing touches, touches my heart so much is because, you know, from the beginning I could walk as a kid, I was always in a chaos. I was always in extreme, like uncertainty, unsecurity, insecurity, and stuff like that from abuse to homelessness to join the Marine Corps, which was probably my most solid time of my life, believe it or not. And then getting out, like it was, there was always some chaos. So hold the vision, trust the process. Everything that you're experiencing is your, you know, this too will pass. And there's something right. to learn, learn from it, right? Excellent. Yep. Excellent point, man. Trust yep. the process, guys. No matter what you guys are going through out there, no matter how difficult it is, make sure you guys keep that vision in mind, like Chris was saying, man. If you guys have that vision, have that dream, keep keep going after it. Don't let any anything 
no, not, nothing get in the way, not even your excuses. Yep. Oh, man. Come on, awesome, man. You're breaking me up over here. <laughs> I'm about to go hike again. I already hiked this one. I'm about to go hike again. <laughs> And finally, brother, uh, where can our listeners, where can our listeners connect with you? Yeah. So um, the best place right now is go to Veteran Empowerment Transition Facebook group. Um, There's that. I'm on LinkedIn. Just search Chris Hoffman. I should be one of the top names there. Um, You can actually follow me on, um, you know, Facebook as well. Just look me up, Chris Hoffman. You guys can go visit vettraininggcoaching.com. And if you guys still want the pre-selling copy of 10 Steps to predict the success out of the uniform. It's at ambitiousvet.com. We're actually working on launching that in Amazon probably in the next week or two. We just got Stephen Kuhn to write the forward for that. So that's huge. Awesome. It's huge. And, um, you know, why are we still opening up the pre selling process is because we're actually going to be creating a back end fire team of people who bought it pre sale. And we're going to offer an affiliate program for anybody that bought. You know, buys it from the the ambitious vet um, website, and we're going to give them an affiliate process to actually make money through sharing, right? So they can actually make the money back from the purchase. So that'd be the best way to uh, connect with us for now. Awesome, brother. So guys, make sure you guys check check that out. Ambitiousvet.com, you said, Chris? Yes, sir. That's it. And uh, awesome. And then make sure you guys connect with Chris on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, any other social media platforms. Uh, Chris, one final question for me, brother. Um, what can I do to help you? Oh, man. Come on, man. You know what, brother? Like, what you can do to help me is can you continue to share your story, brother. Like, I had I had reading on my show, for those of you guys that are watching or going to be watching later, um, on my show like a week ago. His story is absolutely amazing. Coming from the Philippines, spinning his fan, you know, coming with his family, wearing his like cousin's female socks or shoes it was shoes. Shoes <laughs> for a little bit to like becoming who you've become today, man, which is a, a powerful active duty serving military veteran out there. Um, not veteran yet, but active duty military guy to building this movement to empowering fitness professionals and entrepreneurs and influencers, man, like just continue to share that story, man, and continue to touch lives and that's what the, that's the best thing you can do for me, man. It's just continue to share that story because people will buy into that more so than what you're actually doing. Yep. Awesome, Chris. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for joining me th- this uh, this week, Chris, as uh, our guest. And guys, make sure you guys check out Chris Chris Hoffman at the social media platforms. Uh, go check out that website to grab a copy of that ebook, ambitiousvet.com. And uh, Chris, thanks again, brother. Yeah, brother. It was really nice spending some time with you and connecting with you again, man. I always love seeing you, man, connecting with you, brother. Thanks thanks, thanks for everyone's time. Awesome. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you, just you know, message your way. Vice versa, brother. Some fidelity. All, right, All right, brother. All right, guys. Take it easy.